it's the end of the month. It's the end of the vlog. Escape's over. Bye. Hey guys, welcome to A Little Bit of Monica. We are back with another Escape the Readathon reading vlog, and this is gonna be the last vlog because this is the last week in May. And oh my goodness, I can't believe it's almost over, but we still got a last week to go strong. Snack Squad, we can do this. I believe in us. By the time this video comes out, we will probably already know the results of this readathon. So, um, these are my early words at the beginning of the week saying we've got this. As we are getting started with this week, I do have to mention some of my objectives here because I have sorely failed on my TBR for this month when it comes to my NetGalley arcs. One of my strongest intentions for this month was to get through the NetGalley arcs that I have had that were coming out this month in May. And I still have three books on my list that I have not gotten to. So those are going to be my priorities for this week. I mentioned that in my vlog from last week that it was supposed to be a NetGalley arc week and I only got through one. So this week it is going to be very, very serious for me to buckle down and get these done. Eventually I want to be able to get to the point where I'm reading the NetGalley arcs before they come out, but right now I, I just need to make sure that I'm catching up and getting up to date with them. So I still have three. The book I'm starting today is When She Was Me by Marley Bush. This book came out on May 7th, so I'm starting at the beginning of the month trying to get this one done. And because the book is already out, I also am going to be using the audio along with my ebook. So I'm really excited to start this book and find out, you know, how this book is going to go. It's a thriller, but I don't know a whole lot about it. So it's going to be very fun. We've got a lot to look forward to this week, and I'm very excited to see how this final week of Escape is going to go. I will keep you updated as I am progressing through the book, progressing through the buildings, and as all of the chaos reigns supreme throughout this last week, I will keep you updated and you'll be coming with me along the way. So with that being said, I am going to jump right into reading and I will check in with you once I have made some progress. So I am 23% into When She Was Me by Marley Bush. This is the first arc that I am reading for this week. So far, what I know is that there are two girls, they are twins. Lenora and Cassie and they live in a cabin that is owned by someone else that they're like renting the like cabin area but this person also has other cabins that are available for rent so it's kind of like almost like a campground vibe but these girls have something to hide I don't exactly know what it is yet but definitely there's something weird going on the one sister Lenora seems a lot more internalized. She doesn't really leave the cabin building very often and Cassie's the one that goes places and does different things and like talks to people primarily. So it's a really weird dynamic that I'm still getting to know but as the story is progressing basically there is a new owner of the property so they are getting to know her and there is another tenant in one of the other cabins down the way so there are new people that they're interacting with and it's very interesting so far. I'm not quite sure where we're going to go with the story. All I know is that something is up with at least one of the two sisters and I think that's what we're going to be uncovering is exactly what they're capable of and what kind of secrets that they have. So it's definitely pretty interesting and I think the audio is definitely helping me get through this pretty quickly. So I'm hoping, I'm not going to be able to finish it tonight, I don't think, but I'm hoping to be able to finish this within the next day or two just so I can stay on track to be finishing the other arcs that I have. I will check in with you a little bit later, probably tomorrow, once I have made it into like the second half of the story to see where we're going with that. But I will check in with you once I've made some more progress. Daily check-in here on this Thursday. It has been oddly productive today. I ended up waking up before my alarm today. <laughs> no, but getting up earlier meant that I actually had more time to get things done. So this morning, I am almost done editing my vlog from last week. I got to 50% in my book. I did not get to 50% last night because last night was Vampire Diaries with Cassidy's Patreon. And yeah, so I didn't have as much reading time as I had originally thought I would. But I am at 50% now in, uh, what book am I reading? Um, When She Was Me. And so I did that. I also played some Stardew Valley because why the heck not? And I did the laundry. And I just took the trash cans down to the curb. And while I was outside, guess what I found? Some book mail, of course. Now, I have put myself on a book buying ban recently. And so the only books that I am receiving now are monthly book subscriptions like Illumicrate and eventually someday Bookish Box if they decide to ever get caught up. 
and then books that I've pre-ordered through the Barnes & Noble pre-order sale or if I pre-order them on Amazon already but I am really reining myself back from even pre-ordering things on Amazon like on a whim because I need to stop buying books. So the two books that I've received today are ones that I had already had pre-ordered and I'm very excited for them. The first one is Heaven Breaker by Sarah Wolf. This is another Red Tower fantasy and this one is about jousting on machines. Okay, if you have been here for any length of time, if you know anything about me, you'll know that I'm a big, big fan of the Renaissance Fair. I used to work at the Renaissance Fair and I helped with the jousting company. I helped take care of the horses and helped the guys practice for their activities on horseback. And so much fun. Absolutely loved that experience. Jousting in itself is so fascinating to me. And I just absolutely love it. So when I saw that jousting was in the description of this, I'm not kidding you. I literally stopped reading the description and hit buy. Like I didn't need to read anymore. I already knew that I wanted it. So I ordered this from uh, Barnes and Noble during their pre-order sale. And then I also forgot that I had already pre-ordered it from Amazon and I definitely forgot to cancel either one of them. So um, they're up on the top shelf. It is a second copy of this. I need to return one of them, but I got the Barnes & Noble one today. And then the other book that I also got today was also from Barnes & Noble, and it is Ruth Ware's One Perfect Couple. I have loved the books that I've read from Ruth Ware so far, and this one is actually going to be our Pyramid Book Club pick for June, so I'm really excited to have this one physically. I got the Barnes & Noble exclusive. It has some special content in it. I'm not really sure what that is yet, but I'm really excited for this book because I'm excited for Ruth Ware. And yeah, that's my update. Two new books today and I need to do some more reading. Like for sure, I need to read some more today. So with all of that said, I'm going to jump back into reading after I finish wrapping up some work tasks that I am pretty much done with, but just got to wrap some of that up and then it's time to read. It's, it's time to read. Good Friday morning. I am so glad that it's Friday because that means that it's almost the weekend and this is Memorial Day weekend, which means... It's a three-day weekend and I am very much looking forward to this because my work also has off on Monday. So I also get that extended weekend and that means more reading. And speaking of more reading, I wanted to give you my update on When She Was Me. This book is very good. I am 71% so I am going to finish it out today. I had three objectives today. The first one was to finish editing my vlog from last week, which I just finished a couple minutes ago and it is currently downloading. And then my second objective is to finish this book, which I will absolutely be doing. It's a pretty quick read. Honestly, I read about 40 to 45% of it just last night and I was very tired. So the fact that I still stuck with it, I even took a nap in between. <laughs> I started reading, realized I was not staying awake, took a nap, woke back up, and kept reading. And now today I'm going to finish it for sure. And then the third objective is to play Stardew Valley. And that's just going to be the fallback. Like, that's just going to happen. But I knew I had to get the first two things done first as priorities. I also have to still be working, doing my job. And there are a few tasks that I have for, like, Fridays in general, so gotta pay attention to that but I am gonna jump into reading and so this book is like really weird in the way that the whole time you are supposed to kind of be confused about the sisters so we're following two twins who live in this cabin in the woods and this other family moves into a cabin right down the path and the daughter of this other family goes missing and winds up dead and the story is trying to figure out what happened to her but the sisters the twins that are the main characters Cassie and Lenora they are like kind of suspicious of each other and also of themselves and also of everyone around them like it's just this whole thing of paranoia and we're getting flashbacks to the past but the flashbacks are very very cleverly written to the point where you don't know which sister it's talking about it's written from a like first person perspective of like when i'm doing this i am doing this and you are doing that you were behaving this way but it doesn't use names so you don't know if it's cassie or lenora talking about the other 
And I think that's really clever because it makes you think what's happening in the present timeline that's been impacted by this past that we don't really understand fully. And obviously those things are going to be uncovered within this last 30%. And I'm really excited to find out what it is because these girls are like real weird. They, they just have a very interesting dynamic between them. But you also know that like both of them could possibly be capable of doing the things that they're like accusing each other of doing and it's just it's a whole lot to try to figure out so yeah so the last 30 percent i'm excited to see how this is going to continue and then wrap up but so far i'm really liking it i don't think it's a five star read honestly thrillers tend to be hard to be five stars for me but this one is pretty easily a four star at this point so as long as it doesn't get any worse we'll be good with four stars but it could get better honestly if the twist is you know, crazy, then it could be five stars. I just, I don't think it will be, but I love being pleasantly surprised. So I will keep you updated once I finish the book and we see where I land on this one. But so far, so good. And it's only 9 15 a.m. and I am already being very productive. So, like, this is going to be a good Friday. I feel it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I proved myself wrong <laughs> with finishing this book. So it is 1230 and I just finished When She Was Me by Marley Bush. So this has been a very productive day. I'm about to have a cat try to eat my camera. So here's to hoping that doesn't happen. So earlier I said that this book was trending towards about four stars. It would have to be pretty impressive in order to get a five star rating for me just because like it seems like an average thriller, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I'm giving this five stars. Like, four and a half to five, but like, I think I'm giving it five stars. <laughs> the twist in this was so good. I truly did not see it coming, even though it was set up in a way that makes you feel like you can try to figure it out. But like, the twistiness of the twins and like everything that's going on there is just so much unknown and the flashbacks to the past story and trying to figure out like who is who what's going on like it all comes together in like the most spectacular way and I I'm just so shocked like it was so good Kobu you are just so yeah, I did not expect to end the book with my jaw dropped, but I actually loved it. I love the resolution. There's a lot to say about this book, but not a lot that I can say, spoiler free, simply because there is a lot that you don't know for a lot of the book. And there's a lot of twists that come in that last like 15 to 20% right before the resolution. And so I can't say a whole lot, but I loved this. I thought it was so good and this is this author's debut which makes it very promising that like I would absolutely read from this author again. I think this was fantastic and oh my brain is like shutting down like I can't <laughs> it was brilliant honestly it was brilliant the way the author provided us with the perfect amount of vague information in order to build this suspenseful story and build it up to the point where at the end you just feel like what oh my god and that's exactly how I feel so um yeah yeah this was fantastic so five stars for this one how crazy I truly did not ex like truly did not expect that this was going to be five stars from the last update like had no idea but here we are so I wrapped up this one I don't know what I'm going to do next. I have two choices for which book to jump into because I am trying to get these arcs done this week. So I have She Left by Stacey Gray and My Darling Dreadful Thing by Joanna Van Bean. I need to get both of these done, but I don't know which one to start with. I feel like I might do 
my darling dreadful thing first because I feel like it's more of like the horror vibe and I want to switch things up she left and when she was me I feel like they're gonna have the same kind of thrillery vibe to it so I might break that up and do the horror in between so I think I think that's my plan I think I talked myself into that plan so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and start that book I do not have the audiobook for this, unfortunately. I don't think I was able to find it anywhere. So I'm on my own, just my eyeballs. We'll see how this goes. But I'm like on a high now. Like I, I feel like ending this book makes me really excited to keep going into the next book. So here's to jumping in to another one and I will keep you updated along the way. So it's raining, which is like my favorite kind of weather. And like, check out this rainbow. I'm like, I'm so shocked. It's like the most vibrant rainbow I think I've ever seen. And it's full. Like, we can see the entire arc. And it's a double. Today has been blessed. This is just, it's so pretty. I want to stay out here forever. Time for a very quick update. I have been really bad at updating this weekend, but... I have been making some really good progress in my book, so I wanted to provide you with this brief update and synopsis check-in because I don't think I ever told you what my book is about. But I am about 75% through My Darling Dreadful Thing, and so far this book is really good. I'm really enjoying it, but it's like a little bit different than what I was expecting. And honestly, I came in with like really no expectations at all, so it's kind of been a weird experience but I am really liking the vibe. So this is like a gothic, I thought it was supposed to be more of like a horror vibe. And I would say it's more of like a cozy horror because we are following our main character, Roos, who I believe is 21 years old. And she has been raised by Mama, who I believe we don't know if it is her real mom or not. And so it's kind of a mystery going on there, but she basically was raised as the assistant to her mom as like a psychic medium where they kind of run this manipulative uh, fake seance business. And Ruth has a spirit companion named Ruth, genuinely has the spirit companion and helps her mom with these seances and convinces people who are paying them that you know she can talk to their dead relatives and it makes a pretty lucrative business but eventually there is one person who shows up and requests to talk to her late husband and later on ends up paying to have Roos come and stay with her and so Agnes and Roos end up developing this very interesting sort of relationship dynamic that is still being explored in a lot of different ways as well as the relationship between Roos and Ruth because as the like spirit connection that they have it's also a very like intimate connection and at times I'm a little confused with what kind of dynamic we have because I'm pretty sure that Ruth came to her when she was a child and Ruth was an adult but now that they're both adults like it's this very like weirdly intimate type of a relationship that's a little bit funky but also I don't know something about it like also makes sense like it's weird I'm I'm a little weirded out by not knowing what the heck is, I'm reading sometimes but we are essentially getting to see Ruse's new life when she's living with Agnes this woman who essentially saved her from the very serious abuse that mama had done to Ruth her entire life literally locking her in like a cupboard under the floorboards and starving her and trying to force her to look like a child in order to manipulate their customers more like this whole mess absolutely heinous and now that she's freed from that setting she is trying to build a life with Agnes in her home in like their like very large manner a lot is going on regarding the late husband and and Ruth basically trying to figure out how best to lead this life and it's 
really an exploration into a lot of these relationships and figuring out what is best for everybody. And so things are really, really complicated right now. And um, Ruse makes some really bad decisions in this book. But we're getting to see a lot of the side effects of that and I think it's a really fun exploration into all of these relationships and what everything is turning into because of her ability to intermingle with the spiritual world. But he also learns a lot about Agnes and what Agnes can also do and see within the spiritual world and so like it's this whole thing. The dark creepy vibes are legit. It's not like horror scary but it is like a cozy horror like gothic style setting like it, it's more of a creepy environment and the vibe being dark and creepy but not necessarily like the events or I don't know like scary things happening if that makes sense so far it's just very weird and it's hard to explain because in some ways like it's kind of hard to fathom what's happening in the book because it is so supernatural based but overall i am really liking it and at like the three quarters mark i'm really excited to keep going so i will let you know what i think once i have finished this book i would say right now it's trending between three and four stars i don't see this being a five star read but i also said this about the last book and it ended up being five stars so we're gonna have to see what happens with this one but i will update you more once i've made progress tomorrow is going to be memorial day and we're having a picnic at my parents' house, so I'm not sure how much I will update tomorrow, if at all, but I will keep you updated as we make some progress because this is the last week of escape and big things are happening. So yeah, I will check in with you later. So I finished reading My Darling Dreadful Thing yesterday and I didn't have time to do an update until now. So here is my end of book update. I am giving this book three stars. I kind of debated between three and three and a half, but I think I am gonna land on three. <sighs> And it's a little bit disappointing because I feel like this book in like its overall form was trending towards four stars. Like I was really liking this book the whole way through. It's a little bit slower. It doesn't have a lot of like high energy things, but the creepy atmosphere is so good and really kind of keeps you like on the edge of your seat a little bit. Just like wondering what's going to happen. This is very supernatural and... I don't know I think upon finishing once I started like reflecting back on what I had read I kind of started lowering my opinion a little bit so I like where the story went I like the plot I think it was all pretty interesting and something I forgot to mention before is that this book is written in a, a different format it's not just the events as they're happening we are reading this in the perspective of Roos is getting interviewed by a doctor because she's on trial for murder and she is getting interviewed by this doctor where he is finding out what happened and getting her story so that he can help determine if she can plead insanity or if she was, you know, acting of her own free will, like all these things that he's trying to figure out what these pieces, when they are put together, what they're going to mean for this trial. And I think this is a super interesting approach. One, because the interview sections are kind of thrown into the story. Um, it's typically at the end of a chapter and it's just a couple of pages of like, here's them talking to each other. It's the, the notes, like the official report from each of the times that he meets with her. And she's telling him the story. So then the like full chapters and like the majority of the book is her story. So it is told in a, you know, feature perspective like on the past it's her memories that she's talking about so you already know that everything already happened but you read it through the lens of this doctor is trying to find out if she was delusional or if everything that she is saying really did happen the way that she says it did and this is a very interesting approach and I think that that made it really interesting for me like that helped to hold my attention but it's after I finished the book, like all that was fine. But when I think back on some of the characters and interactions, that's where I start to question my own judgment on this book. So Ruse is 21, I believe, in this book. But she's made to look younger because Mama, the person who raised her, wanted her to appear younger so that they would get more money from their like customers and stuff with the seances and so she is very infantile like Ruth is treated like a child a lot 
she is emaciated so she, her body is physically a lot smaller than it should be and honestly just like her emotional mental growth was stunted as a child and so she does have a very like childlike type of feeling to her yet she is an adult legally she's 21. I'm a little confused by the age gap between Roos and Agnes because Agnes is a married woman or like the whole thing is that her her dead husband is like what catapults her into reaching out to mama and Roos about the seance and like she obviously is old enough to have gotten married and had a lot of really complicated things going on in that relationship and so I'm like how old is Agnes at this point? I don't know that there's necessarily a huge gap because she could have been married really young which is fine but I feel like we don't get a whole lot of information about the gap there and it's just like all very weird like it, it's just the kind of thing like once you think about it you're like uh, uh, I don't know I don't know I think that that definitely contributed to me lowering my opinion of the book after I finished it. It's just a lot. It's like a lot of a book and uh, I don't know like I was liking it but but yeah the more I think about it the more I'm like how much did I like it? How much? Now I'm going to be moving on to my next book which is also a NetGalley arc but it is my last NetGalley arc of the month. The last one that I needed to get through in order to keep up with my goal. So the next one up is She Left by Stacey Gray. This is a thriller. Honestly I don't know the plot. I don't know anything about it but I'm gonna find out very soon because I am literally starting it pretty much right now and because I am late to the game and getting to this book it is already out. I think it came out on May 14th I believe and there is an audiobook out already and I believe that I can get it through my library's hoopla so I'm going to be listening to the audio and reading the ebook that I got from NetGalley so I'm going to dive into that and I will keep you updated as I go. Happy Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday. This week is totally out of whack because of Monday being a holiday but it's fine. I think it's Wednesday. I need to give you a quick update. So I went to the library today to pick up a couple of books. One, I got Dark Shores by Daniel L. Jensen and Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison. These two books have been on my like mental TBR for a while. Black Sheep I requested from the library right after I finished Such Sharp Teeth because I really liked um, her writing and wanted to read some more and Dark Shores I have the audiobook for. I got it like on sale from Audible or something like that and I've been meaning to read that ever since I read A Fainton Blood because I really liked Danielle Jensen's writing. So I have these two books from previously read authors. I'm gonna see if I can fit them in somewhere at some point. I doubt I'm gonna read either of them by the end of the month just because it is the 29th and we have like two and a half days left. So yes, but the real update that I needed to provide here besides the fact that I got Dunkin today and I got the like raspberry donut coffee which is very good I really really like the like raspberry flavoring but anyway the real update is the book that I'm currently reading which is She Left by Stacey Gray and I am 32% in so about a third of the way and I want to give you an update on what this book is about because now that I have gotten into it I kind of understand although <laughs> there's still a lot that I don't really know what's coming but this book is about a massacre that happened 20 years prior and like in the present day there is a group of people who were somehow involved in the original massacre and they are all gathered together in this like secluded I don't know if it's like a B&B &B kind of like a rental house on like a mountain so they can't really like get to the town like super easily and they all gather here and find out that there's a reason that they were gathered, obviously. And it has something to do with the massacre, but they're not quite sure what's going on. It's kind of still vague as far as like the actual motive behind this. There is one thing that's revealed fairly early. I mean, like I have already discovered like one person who is responsible for gathering them all there and why. And it does have to do with... Um, the person who was charged with the massacre, like the, the murders and everything. And okay, first of all, I thought I was going to start it on Monday because I finished my Darling Dreadful thing on Monday. 
but I didn't start. She left until yesterday, Tuesday. Now the irony here is so weird because when I picked up this book yesterday and I read the description just quickly before starting so that I would have some sort of foundation, this book is about a massacre that happened on Memorial Day 20 years ago. This is Memorial Day week. Like Monday was Memorial Day. <laughs> and I started a book the next day about a massacre that took place on Memorial Day. What are the odds, right? Like what are the odds that this is the one arc that I saved for like the last couple days of the month and didn't get to and I'm reading it the day, two days after Memorial Day and it's about a Memorial Day massacre. Wild, right? So anyway, super weird, but the way that this book is set up is kind of interesting I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. So far, I, I don't think I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm very, I'm very mixed feelings right now, but it is broken into like numbered chapters, but also the chapters have like, t some of the chapters have titles based on whose perspective we are getting, but the perspectives are not by name. They're by like title, like the witness and the guard and, um, the girl, the mother, like that kind of description. And the like weird thing is that we we know who the characters are. Like we've already met them and we know their names and we know who is who. So like by giving them that vague title, I don't know the purpose other than trying to keep things feeling mysterious. But like there's a set group of people here and like we know what each of them are in the story for the most part obviously everybody's got secrets but like I don't know it's just a weird setup I, I kind of like it but also there are a couple of characters here that I'm getting confused with each other and it's just kind of hard like don't title it by like their title like just put their name just put their name but I, I do still like that this is turning into more of like a murder mystery type of vibe in like this isolated setting. Someone has already died. They have to figure out what happened and also figure out like one, like how to get out because all of their phones and keys and stuff have been taken and hidden and they don't know where to find them. So they're like pretty much trapped here and trying to figure out what happened. So yeah, it's a lot, but so far like it's it is good like I'm enjoying the story having a good time and I will check in in a while okay so as promised I am back for an update I am at 78% so it's a little bit past the three quarter mark but I'm still really enjoying this book it is a very 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 typical thrillery murder mystery type of vibe it actually reminds me a lot of one by one by Ruth Ware except instead of being at a ski chalet on a snowy mountain, we are kind of like in the middle of nowhere on a regular green mountain. And yeah, it's still got that like someone's a killer. We don't know who. They're all trying to investigate and figure it out. And they're all like, oh, we should never be on our own because then somebody could get us. And then obviously someone's going to be on their own. And something's going to happen. There is currently like the couple of people who have left to go get help and are gonna like have their own issues but you don't know who's the killer so you don't know if it's one of them or one of the people at the house and it's just like this whole thing so it just feels like a very typical kind of setup the formula is it's nothing brand new but it is still really interesting I feel like some of the writing is a little bit simple and I still don't know how I feel about the format where like every couple of chapters we get per perspective chapters from different characters and it's just like titled after the person's title which I still don't really love and I don't see the point in switching this up because it's all still from third person it's not like we're getting like actual uh perspectives like first person but we are getting a little bit more of a view into like their personal approach to what's going on and slowly uncovering secrets I do feel like this book is moving really quickly it's really not a long book I probably am gonna try to finish this today yet so like it's not taking me that long but I also feel like there's not a lot happening it's a lot slower of a an uncovering of everything 
So I have to see how this last 20% goes and like what's actually going to be uncovered and, and who's behind everything and whatever happened the original night 20 years ago because they're still uncovering all of these secrets. I don't know where this is going to go. Right now we're trending towards three and a half to four stars probably. It's good. I just there's nothing like standing out to me about this book compared to any other book of its type which like I said it's a pretty typical formula here so love to see if something else happens that makes me change my mind on like whether or not this stands out at all but that's where we're at for now. I will be checking in again once I finish the book hopefully today but if not today definitely tomorrow because I've only got 20% left and it's a pretty quick read so I will check in once I'm done. My work day just ended and it's starting to rain and by rain I mean storm because it is thundering occasionally but I love rainstorms and I could not resist the temptation to come outside. So I'm literally just sitting outside my front door. We have like a little bit of an overhang. <laughs> yes, perfect timing. That was a long one. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'm sitting under the overhang, kind of like on our front porch-ish type area, and yeah, just enjoying this weather. It feels perfect, and it's like a pretty light rain anyway, so it's just like beautiful right now. I did it. I finished my book. So she left. I don't really know what to think about this. I think I'm giving it three and a half stars, but I can't decide if I'm going to round up to four or down to three. I'm leaning towards three, I think. This book was a very average thriller. Nothing like super special stands out to me, even from finishing. It just felt like a pretty typical formula, but it wasn't bad. I do like how the events unfolded. I do think that the mystery was a little bit less exciting than I thought it was going to be. Just kind of the way that secrets were unveiled and the action carried out. I wasn't like super impressed. So I, th I think I'm going to give it three stars, but like three to three and a half because it was good. I don't have any complaints. It wasn't like bad. I think the writing was good. It was very short. Like it was a very, very quick read, which was nice. But yeah, it just felt like a very typical thriller setup. I just feel like this book is going to be kind of forgettable, unfortunately. Like it was good, but like not great. And it's not one that I'm going to think about a lot. It felt very, very, very much like One by One by Ruth Ware. Like very much minus the snow. So that's all I've got. I don't really have a whole lot of other thoughts right now. I am working on typing up my neck alley review for this one and this means I have finished all of my arcs that I plan to read this month which I feel very accomplished for doing and now I have to pick a new book to read because we have two days left in the month and I have to figure out what I'm gonna read for these last two days. Hopefully something that I can actually finish in the next two days but I'm gonna brainstorm and then I'll, I'll update you once I have picked a book because I really don't know what to do right now. It is time for Vampire Diaries Night with Cassidy's Patreon, so I'm going to do that. I'm playing some Switch games as well, so it's just going to be a good night, but I will keep you updated once I pick a book and figure out where I'm going from here. Okay, I promised that I would check back in after I picked my next book, and I picked my next book and then I changed my mind, so I'm going to be having two books growing at the same time, I think, probably. But anyway, the book that I'm starting right now is Happy Medium by Sarah Adler. This book I am buddy reading with Michelle, and honestly, I'm really, really excited. I've been looking forward to this. I had this book pre-ordered because I love Mrs. Nash's Ashes, which was her debut. And this is the book that just came out in April. So I'm really excited because this is a cute little rom-com about a con artist who works as a spirit medium, but like she cons people out of their money, but she has morals. Like she does. She has some rules that she lives by to make sure she's not cheating people too much. But she is hired by one of her clients to go to a goat farm and um, figure out what's going on because there are some like supernatural happenings and basically they think that the property is haunted and the current owner is trying to sell the property but can't do that because all of the buyers are scared off by some sort of ghosty that is haunting the place so they want Gretchen to go and find out what's going on and hopefully get rid of the ghost so that they can sell this property but she's going to learn that instead of an old man owning the property it's going to be a young guy that she finds very attractive so um yeah this book sounds so cute and fun and I feel like it's going to be super like different than what I'm used to with rom-coms because 
when she gets to the farm, there is actually going to be a ghost. Like, she is going to have a ghost that she is talking to, which I think is going to be so fun. So I'm excited to jump into this, but I will keep you updated once I make some progress in it. Since I already told you what it's about, I'll just do some reading and check in once I have some opinions. Time for my Friday update. This is feeling like a very chaotic Friday. Um, I feel like th th my attention is just pulled in like every single direction, but like it's also been productive somehow so I managed to edit my TBR today which is great and that's uploaded and I just need to get some details worked out before posting that this weekend I've also gotten quite a bit of reading in as well as a lot of like actual work you know the job that I get paid to do full-time during the week <laughs> that I neglect a lot uh yeah I did a lot of work for that today um some like invoicing and things I still have a lot to do but I've made progress so like that's something but I want to talk about the books that I've been reading because I have some really cool updates. First of all, I am just under halfway through Happy Medium. I stayed up really late reading this last night because I was loving it, okay? I'm having so much fun with this. You can't take it seriously. Like, nothing about this book is being taken seriously, and I love it because what I explained about the plot is completely accurate. Um, Gretchen is a spirit medium who goes to this farm to convince him not to sell the farm because she runs into a ghost that haunts the place and is like, you can't let him leave because there's a curse that says if he leaves with no plan to return, he will die and then haunt the farm with me forever. So Gretchen is trying to convince Charlie not to sell the house, but he doesn't believe in ghosts. He doesn't believe her story. He thinks she's a fraud because she is a con artist <laughs> at heart. Like that is what she does. So like, he's not wrong, but also she does have some morals and she has to try to prove herself to him and she has a month to do that. Like they have this arrangement. She has a month to prove to him that she's not lying about the whole ghosty thing. So it's just like this really weird kind of setup. But what's funny is first of all, like the attitudes that they all have, they are all so funny. All of these characters are hilarious. They're snarky. They like, it's just, it's hilarious, okay? But then, the ghost that only can talk to Gretchen, like Gretchen's the only person who has ever been able to see this ghost. His name is Everett and I love him. I think he's so funny. Like he's got some issues. He's not a perfect character whatsoever. He's kind of creepy at times and a little pervy. He like tries to like watch her and she's in the bathroom, but she also recognizes that this is his first time interacting with a human in like the however many years since he's been dead like he's been dead like a century it's been a long time since he's ever interacted with a person so he's a little bit rusty in that area and as soon as she laid down boundaries he was like okay i will respect those and he's trying his best right so like he comes off a little bit strong at the beginning but he's so funny because basically all everett wants to do is watch tv and like have some fun and now that he has a friend to talk to he just like you can tell that they have this sort of connection because like he is so just like obsessed with the fact that he can talk to her and it's like so cute so i love the vibes that are going on in here the like friendship with a ghost the trying to get the other guy charlie to like believe her and like slowly they're gonna like you know get to know each other she's helping him on the farm while she's there to convince him and it's just like a solid good time like I'm not taking it too seriously, but it's cute. Like, it's a cute book, and I'm really excited to keep reading it. I am participating in a buddy read of a different book, and I needed to start that today because the buddy read starts tomorrow, but I'm going to be out of town this weekend. So I'm starting the buddy read a little bit early, but we are reading Bone Smith by Nikki Pau Preto. This book is a YA fantasy romance. I'm buddy reading this with... A whole group of people at this point. Originally this was a buddy read that was planned for me and Lexi and Mel and Cassidy and then we ended up getting some people joining in with us and now like Bree's involved and Rachel's involved. <laughs> like we just have a whole group of people now that are going to be doing this buddy read. And now there's you know six of us that are doing this buddy read together but it's so much fun. I am less than halfway um, we split this into like three chunks. So I read the first 14 chapters. I'm like checking which chapters because I have it like up on my computer. Um, so I'm 14 chapters into this so far and really liking it. It's like a pretty fun vibe. And by fun, I mean, it's like more of a darker tone because this is about 
people who can like manipulate bones and so there's a lot of like death and ghosts like a lot of interaction with ghosts because basically our main character Ren like she's a bonesmith but she kind of like fights the ghosts that are like part of the body that provides the bones anyway it's like this whole thing but the story is about Ren who fails the like qualifier like trial thing in order to graduate for like their bonesmith school or whatever she fails and is banished to the like borderland where she believes she's going to be faced with some like potential attacks from the undead the ghosties and whatnot but she ends up meeting the prince and he gets taken and now she and a very reluctant ally that she meets in the meantime are trying to get the prince back they're trying to rescue him and yeah this book it's got a lot going on it's a pretty pretty nice pace I wouldn't say it's like fast paced but it, I think it's moving along pretty well a lot's happened in the first 150 pages ish that I've read so far and I am liking it so I'm excited to keep going but I probably will not be reading this again for like two days just because yeah my weekend's a little bit busy but I am liking this it is a lot to like comprehend sometimes with what they are doing with like the bones and everything because there's a lot it's like a lot of magical like it's a kind of like an ability that they're born with that they can manipulate the bones and do things with them they have like bone weapons and bone armor and all this kind of stuff and it's really cool I really like this world and the abilities that they have but it does take a lot to like fully comprehend so I'm using an audiobook and I'm reading this physically and I'm glad that I have both because it is really helping to kind of like keep me in the zone and like really fully understand what's going on but understanding what's going on I'm really liking it so I'm excited to keep going that is my update. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to be able to read anymore today. So this pretty much brings me to an, the end of May. This brings me to the end of Escape because today is the 31st and the cutoff is midnight tonight and I have my in-laws coming this evening. So I'm really not going to have that much time to read anymore, which is sad. That's pretty much it. It's the end of the month. It's the end of the vlog. But seriously, this month has been so much fun. I have truly enjoyed being able to participate in this, be able to host this. It's been so much fun. Snack Squad, it has been a wild time. Thank you so much for all your hard work and for everything that we've been doing. I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you've watched any of my other vlogs from this month, thank you so much for being here and for participating in Escape. If you've been a part of this, it's been a lot of fun. Make sure that you are once again subscribed to Lexi, all of the other co-hosts for Escape because everyone's amazing and has incredible content and you don't want to miss out on any of that. Also, if you don't want to miss out on anything that I have coming up, please hit that subscribe button. I will be participating in the amazing readathon in June. So I'm going to have weekly vlogs for that as well. And yeah, it's just going to be a crazy time, but it's already been a crazy time. So let's just keep it going. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope that I will see you in the next one. Bye.